Hi, this is Pad Love with Pat's Two Cents. We are here on Saturday with God's Church of Love online. This is your word. Take heed and be quiet. Fear not, neither be faint-hearted. For the two tails of these smoke and fire brands, for the fierce anger of resin with Syria and of the son of Remelia, because Syria, Ephraim, and the son of Remelia have taken evil counsel against thee, saying, Let us go up against Judah and vex it, and let us make a breach therein for us, and set a king in the midst of it, even the son of Tabal. Thus saith the Lord, and here's your word. Thus saith the Lord God, it shall not stand, neither shall it come to pass. See, sometimes we look at the enemy as this great, big, insurmountable monster, this giant in our lives that we cannot overcome, that we can't get past. But listen to what he says about your enemy. For the head of Syria is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is resin. And within three score and five years shall Ephraim be broken, that it be not a people. And the head of Ephraim is Samaria, and the head of Samaria is Remelia's son. If ye will not believe, surely ye shall not be established. You got to believe. <laughs> You got to believe that God is for you, even when you at times don't feel like you're for God or you might be upset with him or impatient with him. Why things aren't moving faster. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. I'm going to repeat that because some of you are ready to give up and throw in the towel on your walk with the Lord. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them that draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Mm, I got to repeat verse 35. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. Verse 36, for ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. Oh, be patient. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He will strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Don't throw in the towel on yourself. Don't throw in the towel on your walk with the Lord. Don't throw in the towel on God's love for you. There are people that sabotage friendships and relationships because they know in their mind that their belief system says, I'm going to screw this up. I might as well break it up now before it gets ugly. You've got to trust in God's love. God knows where you're crippled. God knows where you're weak. God knows where you're scarred, where you're mentally twisted. God knows that. He knows the dysfunction. He knows where you're out of kilter. He understands that. See, God is looking for pure-hearted people not religious. He's looking for pure-hearted people who know, who realize how messed up they really are. He knows how messed up we can get. He knows why we stumble over our own two feet. We trip over ourselves. 
Some of us don't need the devil to jack us up. We jack ourselves up. But you have to understand the love of God. The love of God is measureless. It's, it's limitless. He reaches so far beyond where you think anybody would reach to get to you. I don't know what you're struggling with and I don't know what gets you down or frustrated with you about yourself. But you have got to know that God is greater than your heart. I don't care how many black holes you got up in that heart of yours. God is greater. And see, this is where we fall short. We mess up, we trip over ourselves, and we think God is a puny God. God won't tolerate but one or two mistakes. God won't tolerate but one or two sins, and, and you're in the trash, baby. You're done. You're toast. It's because you don't get God's love. You don't understand how much he wants for you, how much he longs for you. God is not a good time Charlie. You know how it is, good time Charlie. He hangs out with you when you got money, when you get, things are going well with you, everything's going good, it's all good, yeah. But when you start having problems, good time Charlie's down the road looking for somebody else to have a good time with because he doesn't have time for you and your problems. Well, guess who does? God does. He has all eternity to help you with your problems. But you've got to turn to him and ask him for his help. You have got to persistently ask him. You can't walk out the room in the middle of the test. You never know if you could have passed the test if you quit. Because you got to remember, if you fail the test, you can take it again. God doesn't kick you out to school because you failed a test. He sits you down and teaches us some more. And he helps work out the mental block and the emotional block that hinders you from handling certain situations in life well. He'll work on you. He'll readjust you. He'll, he'll, he will heal you. He will make you whole. God is not only the great physician. People never call him this, but I choose to call him the great psychologist. The great counselor. The Bible does call him a, a counselor. Mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. But see, when we think of counselor, we think of, oh, he'll guide us and tell us how to handle this, how to handle that. God gives us the ability to handle, period. In other words, Jesus is the counselor, but the counselor doesn't only give you guidance. The counselor heals. The counselor opens your eyes to your emotional scars and the wherewithals of everything in the past and how negatively it affected you and why you have the can't help it's over here, why you have the can't help it's over there, why you have those insecurities that you can't seem to shake. And once he begins to expose you to you, healing begins. And as healing begins, you move from a bud to a blossoming rose. And it takes time for that rose to fully blossom. Doesn't do it overnight. Doesn't do it in two or three hours. That bud stays a bud for a while. And you have to understand that even in the area of your life where you're still budding, some of you are just starting to sprout a little bud. The best is yet to come. 
It isn't over when you started the bud. It's not over when you grow your first leaf. You have need of patience. If God Almighty and His holiness can be patient with you and me, then why can't you be patient with yourself? See, when you're not patient with yourself, you're in essence calling God a liar. I'm being a little hard, but it's for dramatic purposes to shake you awake. Don't insult God. You know how we say to each other, don't you insult my intelligence. Well, don't insult God's love because you don't know it well enough to make a flash judgment on what he's going to do with you. Ride this sucker out. Ride it out. God knows what he's doing in your life. Even the failures that you tried so hard not to fall into, even those failures God will use in your ministry in the future. God will use this poor judgment call and that bad decision to establish you in the future because you'll be established with a higher level of wisdom. You'll be shrewd and cunning, wise as a serpent, yet harmless as a dove. All of that comes from our bad choices. Next time you'll see that the the danger signs way in advance. And you well see that's what failures do in our lives. Failures teach. If you have a mind to learn and a heart to receive and eyes to see and ears to hear, failures teach us. Some failures God uses to teach us about ourselves. He's not pulling out the belt. He's pulling out the notepad. Now sit down. We're going to go over this. This is why. See this right here? And remember when that happened? That's why. Now, how are we going to correct this? And again, the healing begins. See, the more healing you get from God, the better choices you'll make. The better choices you make, the higher your confidence level grows. The more you experience God's love, the easier it is to believe in his patience with you, in his commitment to you. See, we don't just commit our lives to the Lord as we accept his son, Lord, the, the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we have to believe God that he is committed to us. God, with all your perfections, all your fallacies, all your weaknesses, all your infirmities, uh -uh, all of your flaws, and your emotional scars. God is rolling up his sleeve. Come on, yeah, buddy. Woo, I got a new project here. Let's see what we're gonna do with you. And he takes his holy loving hands and his holy loving arms and he wraps them around dirty old you and dirty old me. The potter wants to put you back together again. God bless you. Seek the Lord. Seek him with all your heart. Seek him and you will find him.